we're going to talk about annotated bibliographies, um, what they are, how we use them, why you have to do this horrible thing, um, and try to get a little bit more of a handle on how it works and what your requirements are. Um, most of these requirements are generalized um, so that you can take this and use it in any class. An annotated bibliography is basically a place for you to organize your sources and um, make sure that you can tell them apart um, on a particular topic. Um, lots of us have to do research um, across the board. It's not just for um, intro to English classes and things. Um, and this is a way to keep everything together. Um, we used to use 3 by 5 cards and notebooks and things like that. Um, but our computers are much better um, for holding on to things like that, um, easier to find if you remember to label them so you can find them. Um, but the idea here is to be able to um, organize your resources and to explain their goodness or not, um, to give a little bit of a summary perhaps and some um, interesting pieces about them. Um, maybe this is also um, for your own self um, ways to keep you from accidentally plagiarizing. Um, especially in a long project, um, sometimes your ideas and your source's ideas kind of write over each other and it's hard to remember where that thought came from um, in the beginning. And so an annotated bibliography, um, I usually treat it as a supplement to my longhand stuff um, because I'm I didn't grow up with computers, I'm too old for that. Um, and so I still keep a notebook um, with my sources and things and color code and all of that. And you can too. Um, this is a good way to have an anti bibliography is a good repository for the things that you might use in your actual paper. Um, and so we're going to try to walk through a little bit and see how, how this goes along. Um, if you're working from um, my English 112 class, um, you have um, in the weeks uh, notes and assignments and things, you have a PowerPoint for annotated bibliography. Um, if you print that out so that it's three per page like this, you can take notes and things on the side and add some things in there that you need to remember um, or things that it sparks ideas for you. And that way you have um, also a physical copy um, to look at you know, when those times when you're working in, perhaps our internet is not as happy as it should be. Um, so anyway, there's that. Um, I am also going to walk through briefly um, the actual assignment for my 112, but I'm going to put that at the end. So if that's not why you're watching this video, you don't have to kind of slog through that. So like I said before, an annotated bibliography is a very common assignment, um, but it's also something that as you get into more research, if that's where your academic and professional life takes you, um, it's a it's an idea and um, a place that you can fit your research into and make sure that you keep things separately. Um, now, there are three things that um, a wonderful anti-bibliography can do for you. And first and foremost, it's a place to organize your sources, um, to keep things where you can find them to make sure you know um, when you accessed your source, um, especially if you go back and you can't find it again. Um, there's all kinds of reasons for that. Um, the very second, the second slide, um, it's to demonstrate your knowledge of those particular pieces. Um, and it's also um, to make sure that you have um, a place for them to be. Now, part of the part here is to understand the relationships among these different sources. Um, when we start out researching, we have a tendency to gravitate towards the things that agree with us, um, confirmation bias. And so it's helpful to have at least a couple of sources um, that don't agree with you or that do things a little differently than you would. And so having those marked in a certain way or just, you know, that's part of their annotation is this is a counter argument. This is an opposition. Um, it's always helpful to have those ideas highlighted so that you know where 
where to find the information that you need there. Um, these organization pieces, um, what I usually do when I'm doing my annotated bibliographies is I set up a page for each um, source. Now they're all in the same document, um, A, B, for um, peer group relationships, okay, um, is my title. And so I put in that file um, one page for each of my sources. And how you get a new page, in case you don't know, um, and it will always give you a new page. So this is helpful for your references page or your works cited page. Um, is at the bottom of whatever text you want to be the end of that section or that page, um, hold down control and then hit enter. And that automatically gives you a page break. Um, it doesn't move. You don't have to go enter, 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 enter 10 times and then some things look wonky. Um, it just gives you a good page. Um, at the top of each page, um, I would put the citation. Um, and for now, I when I'm when I'm doing mine, I'm giving you my advice. Um, when I'm doing mine, I do my citation exactly as it should be on my references page or my my works cited page or whatever. Um, except that I make it single spaced and I bold it. That way, I know not to mess with it. I'm not going to add things to this. It's just going to be there until I'm ready to actually turn it in. If that's what I'm going to do with this particular piece of work. Um, after that, I have a summary. And that's pretty standard. Um, it depends upon how long the article is. Um, I tend to read a lot, um, English major. And so if I have a 20 page or a 25 page article, my summary could be a page and a half. Um, de just depends upon what I need in the summary and um, how many points the, sum the actual article makes. Um, keep your headings and things that you find in your article um, the same. Make sure, of course, as a summary, that it is um, in the same order as the original um, and that you have all the main ideas. Okay. Um, most of the time, then, you have um, some other things to do with your annotations. And you want to make sure that you keep your citation, Okay, that piece that is um, the citation for your references page or your works cited page in with your um, annotations that go with that particular source, which is why having that page break at the end, wherever the end comes from, is really helpful because you go to page five and there's a citation at the top. Okay, so I'm starting from here. Here's the next piece. Um, and I just go through and put in my citations that I have so far. Um, and it depends upon what you've been assigned or how much research you're doing, um, how many pages that's going to start out with. Um, it always goes up from there, so just keep that in mind. Um, I go ahead and put a header in and make a page number and all of that um, just so I have a reference. Um, I will occasionally print these things out and rearrange things, make sure that I've got things in the right order when I get to the end. Um, and the right order is alphabetical by the author's last name um, or the first content word in a title if it doesn't have a stated author, um, just so you remember. Um, for your annotated bibliography, you need, first and foremost, an introduction. Um, think of it, especially if you're in APA mode, um, as an abstract. Um, you're going to tell us why that particular, and I'm trying to go in order here, looking at um, slide number four um, on the, the PowerPoint, if you're walking with that one. Um, you want to basically give us your research question, um, your thesis statement if you have one already. If you don't, don't worry about it. Um, but an overview of the conversation or the controversy. Make sure that we understand, um, or that you understand as well, um, what you're actually talking about, where the conversation is at the moment. Um, and it's all a big conversation. Um, just because you aren't aware that there are other people out there doing research in this topic, believe me, they're doing research in this topic, whatever your topic is. Um, make sure that you have your current stance in there. Um, you may need to revise that as you walk, walk on and do more work in that particular um, research area um, for that topic. 
Um, and then just make sure that you've got a good, here's where I'm going with this. Um, and your introduction can be rather short, um, a good paragraph. Um, if you're really looking for numbers, probably five to seven sentences. Um, it can be much longer than that. It depends upon how much you can situate um, yourself and your argument and your research and all of that. Um, so a lot of it depends upon what level of research you're working with um, and how much time you have for the assignment, to be honest. Um, your source citations, follow, follow, follow your style guide. Um, as my mentor Patty Linton used to tell us, follow this slavishly. Make it your master in the fact that this is how it's supposed to be done. You don't get to argue. You don't get to ad lib. Um, you don't get to be creative. This is not the time for any of that. Um, there are specific orders. There are specific ways of doing things. Um, it's all laid out in the style manual. Um, if you have a handbook, um, you'll find information in there. Um, your best source updated amazingly quickly after the new books come out um, is the Purdue OWL, O-W-L, Online Writing Lab. Um, look them up on the web, and um, I have a link for them right on my desktop because they're awesome. Um, not just for citations, but for all things writing and English and communications and all of that. Um, but they're very, for, for us, they're lifesavers for citations. You have some weird source that you need to cite, um, and they've got it already figured out, already written down, just like the authors of the APA manual or the MLA manual or whoever else you're looking at. Um, and then they have really clear directions. So use the Purdue OWL all the time. Um, your citations, make sure you have all the information that you can. Um, don't skimp. Um, it's always better to have too much than not enough. Um, make sure that you're telling us um, who did it, when they did it, what they did, where you can find it, and how you got there yourself. That's pretty much the long and short of it. Um, you should also make sure that you are varying your sources. Don't get all of your information from one source, whether that's an author or a journal or a book. Um, you need to have more than one opinion, um, more than one approach. And the more of that you can bring in, um, it, it gives your argument more support. It gives your stance more support. Um, make sure also um, if you're using APA especially, make sure that your articles are very current, usually less than five years old. Um, if you're looking at medical stuff um, or technology stuff, it's probably better to be less than two years old. That's just how that works. Um, the paragraphs themselves, the annotations that come after your citations, um, of course, we've already talked about the summary. Um, make sure that you have the major points, make sure that you have them in the correct order. Um, you can choose to highlight just the things that work well for your particular paper, that's fine. But again, follow the rules. Um, keep them in the right order, keep them in the same way. Don't misrepresent what the author has said. Um, make sure that you always have an explanation um, for where and what this particular um, source gives for your paper, for your particular research, um, a discussion of its similarities and differences from the other sources. Um, this is really helpful when you have, you know, 20 or 30 sources and you're trying to pinpoint, where did I see X? Well, if you go through and you write, oh, here's, here's why I'm using this. Um, here's the quote I need. It's right there. You don't have to wonder where in the world that is, or maybe that's a library book that had to go back or you can't get to that particular spot from here anymore. Now, if your source is not a scholarly article, and by that I mean not a peer-reviewed article, um, and a lot of those are fine, especially if you're doing opposing voices or something like that, um, you need to make sure that your author is an expert in the field, okay? Um, a lot of what we have, a lot of what you'll find if you just do a Google search, um, is John Doe's website. Um, John Doe is not educated in this particular area. Maybe he knows a lot, um, but he's not 
an expert in the field. So you have to go and do a little bit of digging. Okay, so John Doe actually was a first responder at the World Trade Center, and he's going to tell me what happened there. That's legitimate. Okay, um, if Joe Smith's cousin told him a story about what happened, that's called hearsay. Um, that's not really um, a scholarly article. That's not a first-person narrative. Um, you're going to have to have some more backup. doesn't mean you can't use it. It just means that you have to have more support for that. Um, somebody else has to say the same things. Um, and that, that helps um, with your support. But knowing what your source is, who it is, what the credentials are, that kind of thing um, makes you a more credible writer um, and gives your particular assertions more support. And that's what we're really looking for. Remember that this particular assignment and most writing assignments really um, are for you. Um, I know how to do an anti-bibliography um, and I think they're very useful and I use them all the time um, whether I'm doing something in my profession or I'm doing something um, I'm writing something for somebody else I need to know where my stuff came from I need to know where all the pieces fit um, and I tend to be somebody who has to write things down before I'm really sure of what I what I understand or what I know a um, little bit of kinesthetic learner in there and so this is something that's for you it's going to help keep you organized um, it's going to help you know what's theirs and what's not um, this is going to help you avoid plagiarizing um, accidentally so if you know where your sources where your quotes and things come from you can give them attribution you can say okay according to John Smith here's the thing um, and you're not going to be as likely to plagiarize, um, which, as you know, can get you kicked out of school. Um, so we try really hard to avoid that. Um, it also gives you, um, once you have all your citations and stuff there, it also gives you a spot where you can copy and paste um, citations into whatever assignment or area that you need to have. Um, maybe something ends up being, in my line of work, a content footnote. Um, I need that citation for that content footnote, um, even though it's not going to show up in my works cited page. So it's helpful to have it. Um, it's also helpful um, as a process um, to help you get started and help you kind of sort out in your head um, where the conversation is right now, how much else you need to look at, um, what you need to do, and how much of it actually supports the point you thought you were going to make. So um, make it useful for you. Um, don't just randomly choose a bunch of sources and go on. Um, don't just choose the first five that show up on your uh, library search either. Um, figure out how to use the advanced searching and make sure that you're getting peer-reviewed articles, that you're getting um, things that are current, um, that you're getting things that are useful, um, officially useful, not just fun and interesting. Um, there's nothing wrong with fun and interesting, um, but make sure that you've got enough of the formal stuff that um, you can pass the paper. So um, let me know if you have questions on that, and we'll kind of go on from there. Um, the rest of this is for my English 112 class. I just want to make a couple of specifics for you. Um, in your annotated sources, um, for this particular paper, for this particular um, annotated bibliography, um, I want you to have at least five that you do annotations. Your three required peer-reviewed articles have to be three of those five. Um, don't put your peer-reviewed articles in the non-annotated. Okay, no, you have to you have to use those in your paper. So you might as well get over it and get on with it. Um, you need five non-annotated sources, um, things that you're gonna you might use in your paper. Um, they're useful. They're helpful. Um, but you don't have to do all the annotation stuff with them. You can if you want, um, but you don't have to. And then if in any of the five that you're annotating, you have um, a non-scholarly source, you're using someone's blog or you're looking at um, something from YouTube or whatever, um, you have to make sure that you do the 
the background check basically. Um, you have to justify to me and to yourself um, what including this particular source does for your paper. And so you may have to look up things somewhere else. You may have to find out, okay, where did this person go to school? What's their credentials? Um, now, they may have that on their website. They may have that on their YouTube video, um, and that's fine. But if you have to go anywhere else to find that information, you're going to have to cite it. Um, and that goes in, in a third section. Um, and so really, this particular annotated bibliography might have three sections of, annotation, of citations. Um, the first section, the re first required section, is annotated. Those have to have their summaries and the other pieces that go with it. Then there are the five that are not annotated. Um, and then if you have any informational or backup um, sources for those previous sources, then those are a third section. Okay, so use headings, um, annotated citations um, after your introduction, and then um, non-annotated citations, and then informational. I think that's informational. Let me look real quick. Explanatory sources. Sorry, not information. Explanatory sources. So each section should be alphabetized by the author's last name um, or the first content word if you're not given an author. Um, make sure that you walk through, read carefully, annotate, color up, whatever, the annotated bibliography assignment sheet. Um, make sure that you know when the due dates are and how we're going to do that. Um, we are, this time anyway, we are going to use a forum um, for you to post and then peer reviews will be replies. Um, we did that earlier with the proposal, I believe. No, 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 with the EOSA. Um, and so I want you to do that again. Um, make sure that you're peer reviewing the one you're supposed to peer review. Um, be nice to your friends here and uh, post on time so that everybody can get their stuff done and nobody has to freak out, um, least of all me. And um, again, let me know if you have questions. Um, you know, I'm always available by email. So go there when you can. So I hope this was helpful. Um, I hope that um, you'll find the annotated bibliography useful, regardless of how um, grumpy it makes you. Um, but I hope you find it useful. And um, then we'll move on to research papers. So 